G'day everyone! This week I am going to start to build the last of my kitchen cabinets. Of course I'm not building a straightforward kitchen cabinet and I'm also going to be putting a really big kitchen sink in that may prove to be too big for the bench top that I have but I'm just going to give it a crack and hopefully it'll all work out. And on a totally unrelated side note you're all going to have to excuse my hair because I've decided after seven years of having no hair that I'm actually going to try growing it out. And it's at the stage now where it's still not quite quite sitting flat and it just wants to keep sticking up so you're just gonna have to excuse the mess um, there is a reason why my hair is going to look so out of control for the next few videos so this is where I'm going to be building the second kitchen cabinet it's basically going to extend all the way from the end of the bed here up to the fridge wall there now before I can build the actual cabinet I need to redo the insulation and the lining of this wall I'm not sure if you remember but when I did the insulation and the wall lining I actually had this entire section of the wall completely blocked off so you couldn't see this window here um, and originally that was my plan I was just going to have a solid wall at the back there behind this kitchen cabinet. Um, I've since decided that I'm actually going to have a little bit of this window exposed. The main reason for that is with the coasters in the window frames down here, you can't see it because it's down in underneath the rubber seal here. There are actually drainage holes in these window frames and they get clogged up really easily with dirt and little tiny leaves and things. And I need to be able to go around from time to time and poke a little bit of wire through there and unblock them so that they drain freely and water isn't sort of spilling over and leaking into the bus. Now with the rest of the windows in the bus, the, just the way that I've done it, um, I can access all of the drainage holes on all the other windows from either inside the bus or outside the bus. But this window here um, is a bit trickier because this is the last double window on the side at the back of the coaster and it is fixed it doesn't have any sliding portions at all so this window doesn't open so I'm not able to slide it open and get to the drainage holes from the outside I've decided to leave this half of the window uh, open to, to the inside so I can get to the frame the back half of the window because the glass sits kind of inside from in the back half I can actually get to the drainage holes from outside the bus on that side so that doesn't matter it's really just this front half of this window so that's the main reason why I've decided to keep part of this window open and also I thought it might be nice to have a little bit more um, of a view and a little bit more light coming in where the kitchen sink is so Okay, so this is the space that I have now. So as you can see, I've just tidied up the insulation on either side of this bit of the window that I want to keep exposed. And I've put the wall lining back on this lower part of the wall here because that's actually going to be like the back of the cabinet in there. And if you're wondering why I've got this weird system of studs that seem to be going everywhere here, it's because I've got these tricky little edges that I'm going to need to clad later on and trim to look nice. So you can see here, um, because this wall is going to be sticking out quite away from the window, I'm going to have this little section in here on either side of the window that I want to clad later on. So I needed to put some studs in there so that I've got something to screw my pieces of tongue and groove onto later on. And there isn't really a lot here that I can actually secure these onto. So I've joined them onto these little short pieces with pocket hole screws at the back um, and then I've just slid them in behind these studs and screwed them into those. So they're super secure. I mean they don't need to be super strong because they're not actually going to be supporting any weight. They're only going to be serving as anchor points for this tongue and groove which is really lightweight. So that's why I've done it that way. Um, that will hopefully make a bit more sense when I come to clad the walls and I can show you how I'm actually doing it. But anyway, so now I'm happy with the wall the way that I've got it there. So basically now I have my space free. I can finally start building the frame for my kitchen cabinet. So just to try and give you some idea of what this kitchen cabinet is going to look like, as I said earlier, it's going to extend all the way from the end of the bed here up to the fridge wall. And it's going to be in kind of 
two maybe three sections so there'll be a section here that's this side of the wheel arch that will be basically floor to bench height storage space and my plan for this is that eventually I'm going to be installing my diesel heater on the floor here at the base of the cabinet because it's pretty much the only space I have left in the bus that has clear access out through the floor to run the exhaust for the diesel heater so that's where I'm going to be putting that so I need to allow space in the bottom of this cabinet for the diesel heater and also for a little fuel tank that I'll be storing in here as well and then above that I'm going to have two removable shelves and I'm actually going to be storing studio tools in these shelves so one of the shelves will hold my binding machine and the other shelf will hold my printer and hopefully some embossing gear and other things so but I want those shelves to be removable so that when it comes time to service the diesel heater I can just get them all out of the way and have plenty of room to get in there and work on that if I need to so that will be this area here on this side of the sink and then this side will have a little bit of storage space under the sink and then on this side there'll be a little narrow cabinet area that I'll be able to put a slide out rubbish bin and have some storage space for tall bottles of things or I may use that space behind the bin for like an extra jerry can of water or something but anyway so that'll be a little narrow pull out storage area there and then there'll be the bench top on top now I'm going to be doing some kind of unusual things with the bench top and the splashback as well later on because I need to accommodate you know that the angle of this wall the wall slopes inwards where the windows are so I need to sort of make a few adjustments for that without losing any depth on my bench space and also as I said this sink that I want to be putting in is quite big this is actually my sink here it's an Ikea sink it's the Langudan sink and it's massive it's actually 56 by 53 centimeters and I know people are going to say it's crazy putting a sink that big in the coaster and I may not be able to do it because I will only have a 600 deep bench to install it into but anyway I've got a few ideas of how I can get around that and hopefully still install that sink because I really don't want to have to buy a smaller one and then on the front of this cabinet, as I said, this will be a pull-out section. So it'll probably just have like a kind of a drawer front or something like that on the front of this narrow bit at the end. Then there'll be a couple of doors underneath the sink. And then this end of the cabinet here, again, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, um, which I've only kind of half figured out. <laughs> Originally, I actually wanted this bench to be like an L shape and to come out on this end on this side of the sink as far out as where the bed does but I, later on I realized I actually can't do that because if I ever need to get this fridge out of the bus um, the only way I can do it is to take the doors off and move it out this way so through here and out the front door there and in order to get around here um, the fridge actually needs to kind of it, it can't just fit straight in here it's got to come sort of this way and then on an angle a little bit and then this way and when in order to be able to turn on an angle to get around this corner here I actually need the bench to to be sort of set back a little bit so that there's room there I mean that that it's hard to explain but I just I can't have a permanent bench top that comes out as far as the bed So what I'm planning to do is just have my standard 600mm bench top. I'm actually going to be building a separate piece of cabinet. It's going to be kind of like a trolley on wheels. <laughs> and it's, like, it's going to um, give me an extra little bit of bench space at the front. And it will bolt onto the front of this cabinet. So it will essentially give me an l shape bit of bench. That I can use for most of the time and then if I ever do need to get that fridge out I'll be able to unlatch this little extra section and get it out of the way and then I'll have enough room to get my fridge out and if that all sounds ridiculously complicated it's because it is <laughs> that's what it's like trying to work out how to fit everything I want to fit in this small space so this is why I spend hours and hours and days and days just sitting in the bus looking at the space measuring things 
trying to get things straight in my head as to how it's all actually going to work. Um, anyway. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to make a start today on the kitchen frame and so the first thing I'm going to do is build the wall supports for this section of the cabinet here. And these are the highly detailed technical drawings I'll be working from. <laughs> this is literally the kind of notes and scrolls that I make when I'm trying to work out how I'm going to build something. This is like all my plans for the cabinet. <laughs> but anyway, so these are the supports that I'm going to be starting with. I'm going to make two of these. So I've got my sizes worked out so I know what I need to cut and I'm just going to pocket hole screw them together. So we'll get those in and then, yeah, take it from there. So there's my two first cabinet supports for that end section. These cross braces that I've put on here, I've put at the right height to um, attach my aluminium angle that will support the shelves that I'm going to have in the cupboard here. And I've also put a couple of bracing pieces in at the back there just so it um, can stand upright. So let's take it into the bus and see what it looks like. Okay, there it is. <laughs> oh gosh, it looks so big now that it's in position. Um, but I'm pretty happy with where it's sitting. It's all um, pushed up nicely against the, um, the wall here. This is the right depth that I've brought this out to to secure it in. So I'm pretty happy with all of that. Um, the only thing I've noticed that I'm going to have to change is I'm going to have to move this stud here out a little bit because um, I've done the width of this section of the cabinet the width that I need to be able to fit what I want to fit in there so I can't make this any narrower and if I've done my calculations correctly and worked out like the space that I need underneath the bench where the sink cutout's going to be to get the clamps and things for the sink on. If I've worked all that out correctly, then um, the edge of my sink is going to be 25 mil in from the edge of this support here. So that would make it um, where I've got this mark on the wall here is where the edge of the sink's going. So I'm not sure you're going to be able to see if I'm trying to hold the camera and do this at the same time. So that, that there is pretty much where the sink is going to sit. Obviously it'll be sitting up quite a bit higher. So on this side the sink is pretty much in line with the edge of the wall or the edge of the, the window that you're going to see there. Whereas on this side um, it's quite a way in. So if I left it like this it would look like when it's all finished the sink would not be like centered in the window and it would look a bit odd. So what I'm actually going to do um, is bring this stud in so that it's in line with the corner of the sink and that'll just mean like the window will be a little bit smaller or the, the bit of the window that you'll see but when it's all finished it'll look like the sink is nicely centered with the window um, so I'm just going to move that and that should be easy enough to move just slide it along out here further and re-screw it Okay, so pretty happy with that. Um, it means that there's a little bit behind this wall that won't have insulation, but you know, honestly don't think it's gonna make much difference because you've got all this glass here anyway. So I'm just gonna leave it like that and hopefully that'll look nice when it's all clad and the sink's in position. Nice little view out the window. I'm gonna build this cabinet a little bit differently from like if you saw the video where I made this cabinet, I actually built the cabinet frame entirely outside the bus and then brought it in and screwed it all in. I can't really do that with this one because it's quite a bit bigger and I just wouldn't be able to get it in through the door. And I think it's actually gonna be easier in some ways anyway with the measurements and things 
um, to actually build this one in situ. So I'll just have to take this one out of the bus again because I want to put a few more bracing pieces in. So a couple on the top and another piece at the front on the floor. Uh, and probably another piece in this middle shelf at the back as well. Get it all fully braced up and then I can bring it back in and secure it into position. got it all secured in there now so you can see I actually went ahead and put the aluminium angle on because it was easier to do that with the cabinet outside the bus and so my shelves now will rest on top of the angle and they should be strong enough um, you can see I also put some cladding at the top of this cabinet at the back because obviously the wall lining only comes up to this height so you would have seen some of the insulation and crap behind there from the inside of the cabinet so I've just tidied that up with a little bit of three mil ply and I did the same thing to the side of the bed because you'll see part of that from inside the cabinet as well. The rest of this wall of the cabinet here is going to be clad probably with tongue and groove like I did this wall here. I'm going to do that on this side here so that'll all be tidied up. Now this is super solid. Actually the whole bus moves if I try and move this cabinet, which is good. So I've got it screwed into the floor at the front and the back. I've got it screwed into um, the studs in the frame of the side of the bed. And I've also got it screwed at um, the bottom there. You can see there's a screw going through into one of those battens that I've got on the inside of the wall. And again at the top here, three screws that are running into this. Um, these ones here are actually quite long, so they're actually going through all of that into the other batten that I've got um, here as well. So through all of that. So that is super strong. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, now that I've got that in position, I can go ahead and do this section of the cabinet here. Boy, it's hot today. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, I've got a few pieces made up here for this other section of the cabinet. I've basically done pretty much as much as I can outside the bus. Um, I can't put it together any more than this, otherwise I just wouldn't be able to physically get it into the bus. So the tricky part now is to try and put the rest of it together <laughs> in this space and get it into position. Um, because I do have a few pocket hole screws that I'd like to be able to get to from the back here. I'm just not quite sure how it's going to work. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, the joys of working in a small space. Okay, so... And there it is. That actually worked a bit better than I was expecting, which is nice. Um, so that's this bit of the frame now in position and I've got it secured into the walls and into the bus. I'm hoping now that I can put the rest of the bracing pieces and other things that I need to do on here from from in here like I shouldn't have to have any more screws coming in from the back now so I mean it's still going to be awkward working in this space but I should be able to just finish it off um, in situ here so I'm going to go ahead now and put in uh, a few extra pieces uh, to support the bench top and other things
well there it is guys second kitchen cabinet frame is all done pretty happy with it actually I've got my storage space on that side for the where the diesel heater is going and then storage on the top this will be where my sink is going and there'll be some storage space underneath there and over here I've got another little narrow bit of storage with some brackets for the shelves if you're wanting to know a little bit more detail about how I did these aluminium brackets. I'll put a link in the description below to the video where I made my first kitchen cabinet because I actually showed a little bit more detail about how I made those aluminium angle brackets for the shelves. So if you want to see a bit more about that, go and check out that video. Um, but for now, that's it for this video and the next jobs to be done on this will be to put the shelves in and then to install the bench top and the sink so all of that will be coming up in the next video so stay tuned for that and thanks for watching guys